Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Corey McCrill, and I am a uh, WordPress developer, and I work on WordCamp.org. And today I'm going to give you a brief little um, case study of converting all of WordCamp's um, custom shortcodes into Gutenberg blocks. So uh, a, a little background on WordCamp.org. WordCamp.org is a WordPress multi-site network, and uh, every WordCamp event that happens in the world, including WordCamp Portland here today, has a site on that network, and that site provides um, tools for um, running a WordCamp event, uh, and that includes um, a bunch of custom short codes for outputting various types of content. And uh, WordCamp.org has been around for 12 years, so there's a lot of a lot of legacy code and other things in there. So, um, like I said, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how, when we were deciding uh, to uh, make WordCamp.org ready for Gutenberg, uh, we decided that a very good step would be to take all of these short codes that our organizers have been using for years and turn them into Gutenberg blocks. Um, because uh, short codes are sort of the low-hanging fruit of uh, Gutenberg block development. And if you're like me and you are traditionally a PHP developer and the idea of uh, all this newfangled uh, JavaScript React stuff is slightly intimidating, then um, I'm here to tell you that uh, if I can figure out how to make a Gutenberg block, so can you. And uh, so, um, just a little bit about why shortcodes are like a really good stepping stone for um, Gutenberg blocks. Um, like blocks, uh, shortcodes are already kind of like discrete, discrete chunks of content, uh, often uh, dynamic content. Um, and the, a, a lot of shortcodes have uh, various parameters that you can use to customize their output and stuff, which maps very well to the Gutenberg concept of having this visual UI with a sidebar and lots of little controls to, to modify things. And um, a shortcode already is itself a function that renders your HTML, which is a key ingredient in your building the Gutenberg block. So let's take a look at um, one of the shortcodes uh, for WordCamp.org. Um, every WordCamp site has a custom post type called speakers. And so uh, every speaker at a WordCamp event is a post. I am a post. And, uh, this is a short code that will output all of the speakers in a list or a grid on a page. And you can see it has quite a few uh, parameters um, that you can use to modify what that output looks like. Here's what the WordCamp Portland um, output looks like for the speaker short code. You can see each, each speaker uh, in the grid has um, their name and an avatar and description and uh, there's a couple other things that the short code can do. That aren't being used here. So, um, when we were approaching uh, converting the short code into a Gutenberg block, we kind of went through three different stages. Um, and the first was uh, great, let's take this short code and we'll just like wrap it in some, you know, Gutenberg y uh, user interface and then we'll just um, let the existing short code function, render the HTML, and spit it out into the preview in the Gutenberg block editor. It seems fairly straightforward. So that's what we did, and hopefully this video is going, oh, good, playing. So um, what you will notice is that um, because the uh, parameters in the block, the settings, are every time they change, it's taking all of the parameter data and it's sending it back to the server and our shortcode function is crunching all of those parameters and spitting it back out as a chunk of HTML, which then loads into the preview of the block. And so every time you make any change, it, the little spinny thing comes up and is reloading the entire preview. Uh, so uh, it works, but it's not necessarily an ideal um, user experience. Um, and you know, if every block in Gutenberg worked this way, it would be kind of choppy. So um, again, so it, it was a really quick way to develop 
uh, a shortcode into a clock, but it's it's pretty slow, pretty choppy, and uh, in fact, um, so the server side render component is something that's available within Gutenberg for um, for doing this sort of thing, but they even tell you in the handbook like, look, this is meant for sort of legacy stuff, and when you're building new things, um, probably shouldn't use it. So we said, okay. Um, Let's go back and uh, take all of the logic from the original PHP shortcode function and, and recreate that in native JavaScript in the client so it can be processed on the client side. So we did that. And uh, of course, that meant as a PHP developer, I had to go and learn more React things and, um, and more about uh, you know, the inner workings of Gutenberg. Uh, but we will not uh, immediately notice is that um, it's super fast and smooth because every time you're changing the value of one of these parameters, the, the logic um, that renders it is happening right there in the client, and so it, it's almost instantaneous. So, uh, but one thing, another thing you'll also notice is that the, um, even though it's like super fast with, with um, the native JavaScript logic, um, the preview of the content itself in the Gutenberg block is still completely static, but you can't interact with it in any way other than with these um, controls over in the sidebar. And so at that point, we were thinking like, okay, um, we've sort of decoupled our, our, this block from the original shortcode. Um, what can we do now to take this a step further and do um, things that you couldn't really do with the original shortcode? And so we started thinking about um, well, what if we wanted to, instead of showing all of the speakers, what if we wanted to um, let people choose individual speakers and um, you know, change the order or things like that. And so this is a video that just shows kind of a, um, a static prototype of what that would look like. But you can see um, in this one, our block actually has an interface right in the content that allows you to select individual speakers or even taxonomies in this case. Um, and interact with them right in the content. And that is the direction that we're going with all of, the, all of our custom shortcodes um, for WordCamp.org. So that is where we're at. That's my case study. Um, these are some links to resources, uh, mentioning the server side render thing that I was talking about. And uh, if you're interested in participating in the um, the block design of some of these short codes that we use on WordCamp.org. You can check out that last link. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>